Do you remember when you first got your driver's license? Wasn't it great? I remember when I got my driver's license, I felt like I inherited the world. Uh, I could finally decide where I wanted to go, how fast I wanted to get there, and what I would do when I got there. I would sometimes get in my car and I would just pick a direction. And then I would just drive to see where I ended up. And it was fabulous. Because in the car, behind that wheel, I was definitively in charge. I turned the wheel, I pressed the gas, I decided the course, I picked the radio station. It was all about, uh, about me, I was in charge. Sometimes I wonder if we like to think that our life with a God is kind of like a car ride. I sometimes wonder if we imagine that we are in the driver's seat with Jesus beside us, or better yet, in the back. Uh, and because we are behind the wheel, we get to find all the aspects of our journey. It kind of sounds nice. It's kind of wrong. We see a little bit of that in our first reading. We hear how Paul and Silas take the gospel, or want to take the gospel message to the province of Asia. That's where Paul feels he needs to go. I want to go north. And yet the spirit of Jesus, it says, would not allow them to go there. There's another purpose at work. And we see the result of that. They meet Lydia and they establish the church in Philippi. Maybe you've experienced uh, something like that where, where God seems to put the brakes on something and tells you no. Because in our own Christian life, there are times when that happens. Where God says, no, not this way. No, not this action. And yet what we see is that those times are not negative times. They are times where God reminds us that we are actually not the ones behind the wheel. That it's he who directs our path and our work. So I invite you to pick up your pew Bibles and turn to Acts chapter 16. It, uh, it probably seems a little bit like a throwaway scene. Uh, just kind of just this little interlude that you don't really think much about. Paul and his companions, they're in Galatia, and they try to enter into Bithynia. But the Spirit says, nope, don't go there. So they go in a different direction. But this reading is quite profound, actually. And it's quite interesting if you understand the geography that's taking place. In verse 6, we read that Paul and his companions, they travel throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia. And it says that they had been kept by the Holy Spirit from, from preaching in Asia. And Asia is to the north. They leave Phrygia, and then they travel north to the province of Bithynia, which would again place them in Asia. And they go right up to the border. Right? It's clear that Paul has a direction. He has an area that he wants to go. He wants to go north. He wants to go to that certain area and preach the message there. And yet, two times, the Holy Spirit, then it says the Spirit of Jesus, said, nope, not this way. They were refrained from going in that direction. And instead of going north, they go west. They go west to Troas, which is an important bridge to the European world. Instead of going north, the gospel, the gospel message, the message of Jesus, goes west and begins to move west throughout the European world. Commentators state that this is actually a place where history is made because of that movement of the gospel. Not only that, that it's believed that in Troas, because they don't go to Asia, so they settle in a place called Troas, it's believed that in Troas, Paul meets a guy named Luke. And Luke writes the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts. All because the Spirit of God said no. Paul and company 
wonderfully had the faith to listen. We sometimes like to think that our life together, or the ministry that we are called to, is something that we need to figure out. That we have to have everything planned out. We need to discern which way we're to go, what we want to do, what actions are going to take place, and how fast it is that we're going to get there. I think it's interesting, and it's comforting, that in this reading, Paul didn't have it all figured out. Paul never received a vision to go to Troas. That occurred when God said, don't go to Asia. When the Spirit said no to Paul and his company, it was a direct declaration that God was directing them. Paul had a plan, but God had a purpose. God was directing them, and it was an establishment and furtherance of God's purpose when God directed them away from Asia. Paul and his company there set deeper on the path that God held out for them. Sometimes, instead of giving us entire blueprints of what to do, God speaks more definitively in what we are not to do. When has God said no to us? I don't think we have to look very far back in our history to come up with an answer. I've heard references, and I'm willing to bet that you have heard references as well, to the 14 years that the building project has not happened. And it's referred to as a waste of time. It's a waste of 14 years. It's a time when nothing has happened. Really? Is it? Was it really a time where we were just spinning our wheels and where God was just sitting back waiting for us to get our act together? Or could the no's that we had along the way be part of the way that God was guiding us and shaping us? Now, I wasn't part of every endeavor, but from what I gather, there were some pretty definitive no's that happened at every step along the way. The no kind of came roaring through. And yes, it was hard for the community. It was hard for us. But it also may have been a process where God was shaping us. And God was forming us into the community that we need to be in order to enter into the next phase of our calling. Like maybe we needed those 14 years. Maybe it allowed us to come together. Not as a group from St. Cyprian's, and a group from St. Michael's, but actually as a congregation of Holy Cross. Maybe we needed 14 years to be able to say that the focus of our ministry, the focus of our work, isn't about windows and pipes. But the main point is about making this place accessible and welcoming to all types of people. Maybe we needed 14 years in order to jettison our own expectations about where we wanted to drive this church, what we wanted to do, who we wanted to be, where we wanted to go, in order to lay ourselves open before God and allow God's Spirit to lead us. The Bible has this wonderful phrase, in the fullness of time, and it brings together an understanding of God's movement in this world and the, and the place that we fit into it. God's plan is always so much bigger than our plan. The Bible says God's ways are beyond our ways. His thoughts are beyond our thoughts. And the way that we fit into the tapestry of God's movement in this entire world 